For a time, it was becoming routine. Someone called in a bomb threat, police shut down the road leak suspension bridge, and then reopened it hours later. The first threat came in September 13th and was followed by three more. The caller claimed the bridge was rigged with pipe bombs, demanded a $400,000 payment, and threatened to start shooting if he didn't get it. We now know that caller was just 14 years old. Why would a kid do something like this? We have to look into the psychology. Psychologist Dr. Stuart Bassman says it's no coincidence the teen chose to threaten a bridge hundreds of miles away from his home in Michigan. He says anonymity is something threat hoaxers seek. And in a sense of anonymity, make a threat that would scare people so that people would know how they feel deep inside, how terrified they are all the time. In a similar vein, the Tri-State saw a slew of swatting calls last year, some targeting schools. The culprits were all juveniles. To a great extent, this is a variation of cyberbullying. But instead of attacking a person directly, you're attacking a location. Do they pose any real danger to the public? They do pose a threat. How tangible of a threat? It's hard for us to know. But we do know that most of the time, they're shooting blanks. Credible threat or not, they have the potential to cause widespread panic and major disruptions. And Bassman says the threats usually don't come out of the blue. They're often preceded by other troubling behavior. Look at what they're drawing. When I work with individuals like that, they have a trail of very violent, heinous art. And it's only a matter of time before life imitates art. Luke Jones, Local 12 News. The team behind the bomb threats was charged in Kentucky with terroristic threatening. It carries a penalty of five to ten years in prison. From breaking news to feel-good stories, Local 12 has it all. Tap subscribe and click the links for more content like this.